Uh, I basically have a PhD in pharmacology. I teach at Sana'a University uh, as an assistant professor. I also do a lot of teaching pharmacology at different private universities, including the Lebanese International University and several others. Uh, so basically, I have no complex of interest. I, uh, I'm not a clinical pharmacist, so I'm not biased to clinical pharmacy. Uh, my perspective is again as a pharmacologist, as an assistant professor of pharmacology, teaching at several places. Uh, so basically the healthcare system is composed of uh, several components. We have the physicians at one side, and I would say they would, be the, they would be the most important part of the healthcare system. And then again we have the nurses, the pharmacists, the dentists, and others. And the main concept would be always is doctors are all in all. They are the most important part of the system. And I'm not here to disagree with this, if there are any doctors here. Um, I'm just saying, are there any problems with the current healthcare, healthcare system? Any gaps, any problems? I think there are a lot. So uh, I think most of us would agree that the offer that we get from, those, you know, from hospitals don't meet the public needs. So not all of us are really satisfied with what the hospital uh, gives us. Um, no discipline in the hospital is really, uh, I would say, the, um, the main responsible uh, like staff for drug use. So who is responsible for, for drug use? Is it the doctor? Is it the nurse? Is it the, um, uh, like the assistant? Who is it? And we have a lot of unresolved issues in drug use. So who is, in, who is responsible for modifying the doses? So what if the doctor writes a prescription and there is like a need for increasing the dose or decreasing the dose? Is it all the doctor? Does the nurse have the right to do this? Does she have the expertise in drugs to do this? Um, who is also responsible for spotting mistakes? Again, doctors are good and uh, some of them are really like the best, but uh, not all of them are the same uh, quality. And again, as human beings, they do have mistakes. So who is respon responsible for spotting the mistakes in, the, in these prescriptions? And then who is responsible for monitoring the side effects uh, that accompany uh, drug use? Who is responsible for dealing with the complications, whether these complications arise from the disease itself or from the, uh, the, uh, the drug use? And who is also responsible for giving further instructions to that patient? Is it all the, pa the doctor? Is it the nurse? Is it the assistant? Is it uh, somebody else? And what about the disastrous mistakes that we all hear about in the, in the media and the news from friends, from family, about mistakes that might uh, end some, you know, somebody's life just because of a, a medical error that happened in the hospital? So I'll give you just some flavor of the scary numbers that um, uh, exist. And uh, just to give you uh, an idea of what's going on. So basically, this is a study that was done in the United States. And 100,000 deaths occur annually, based on that uh, paper, due to errors in patient care. And this is the United States again. So I'm not talking about the Arab world. Uh, seven of them, uh, 7,000 of them are related to medication and uh, problems with the uh, wrong use of medications. That cost the United States about $77 billion per year. Um, this is another study which basically uh, tells us that on 200 patients who were transplanted, uh, you know, with uh, like kidneys or, or liver, uh, there were, uh, following the transplantation, there were about 800 interventions. So there was something going wrong and there were about 800 interventions uh, after, after the transplantation. 28% of these interventions are associated to drug indications, so basically using the wrong drug for the, for the wrong person. 26% are related to high dosing, so basically giving extra dose to the patient, which is very uh, dangerous. And 18% is associated with subdosing of, of the drug. Uh, this is another study which shows or which compares the situation in a hospital which has a clinical pharmacist in the intensive care unit compared to another hospital which doesn't have a clinical pharmacist. And what they noticed is they can reduce the avoidable side effects by about 66% just by adding a clinical pharmacist in the intensive care unit. So a lot of people still think, you know, we don't need clinical pharmacy, why would we need it? So I'll give you maybe some cases which may be uh, closer to the mind. So basically, a leukemia patient received intrathecal vincristine. So basically, vincristine is, is one of those vinc alkaloids. We call this, uh, we call them like vinc alkaloids because they are extracted from vinca and it's an, an anti-cancer. It's a very famous anti-cancer drug, but it should be given like either orally 
or intravenously, but it was given by mistake intrathecally, like in the, in the cere cerebrospinal fluid. And what happened is basically he died in 2001. So this is a tragedy for one person. Another person received bubivacaine, which is one of the local anesthetics and one of the best local anesthetics that we have in pharmacology, but it was given the wrong way, basically intravenously. It is very potent, so in the same way it inhibits and blocks sodium channels in the sensory neurons, and in that way it could block pain and pain pathway, it can do the same thing in the heart, which can basically stop the heart from beating. So that's what happened. It should have been given uh, intrathecally, but not intravenously. And that uh, led to his death in, in three days. And then you have this girl, she was three years old. She had convulsions, both the flu vaccine. And we know that everybody's vaccinated against flu in the United States. But because of the you know, a side effect, she had some convulsions. Instead of giving her oxygen, what she was given is nitrous oxide. And nitrous oxide is a general anesthetic and it is very potent. So it, 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 uh, or, or, or it killed that, uh, that girl. What about what we hear all the time about antibiotic misuse? Like, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, pro, a big problem, like um, giving the wrong medication to the, to the wrong bacteria, so it uh, develops uh, that resistance against that, those antibiotics, and now we have a, a big problem with that. Um, so this is, a, uh, to those who like statistics, it shows the number of deaths in the United States starting from 1999 to, to uh, to um, 2010, and it shows the increase in deaths that occur as a result of wrong, uh, wrong use of drugs. Uh, this is another uh, table. It basically uh, compares the death in the U.S. Uh, that occur as a, as a result of drug overdose and, to, and those um, uh, as a result of car, car crashes. And if you compare the numbers, there are more people who die out of drug overdoses than those who die out of car crashes, which basically, uh, you know, should uh, put a, a big, uh, like, question mark on uh, the healthcare system. So, this is on one side. So, on one side, we have a big problem in the healthcare system. Now, I'll shift gears a little bit and talk about the other side. What is the role of pharmacists? Uh, I think most of you will, and also Anna touched on this, that we have a problem with the role of pharmacists and how people perceive us. So if you ask somebody in the street, um, how do you see a pharmacist? What is a pharmacist? He might say, well, uh, they count tablets. Um, big problem. Uh, you ask somebody else, he might say, well, you know, they just weigh and measure stuff and, you know, put things together. Uh, you ask somebody else, he would say, well, they have shops, shopkeepers. Well, we studied five years to be shopkeepers. And then some of them would say, well, they answer the question, tell me how to use this medication. They help us in, like, you know, reading the prescription. Um, some people, they would say, they prescribe ODC drugs, which could be a, a little bit complementary, so we can prescribe some drugs. Um, a lot of people would say, well, they're not healthcare professionals at all. They're just businessmen. Uh, they open a pharmacy and start selling and, 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 and that's it. Um, some people would uh, wonder, does anyone need a degree to be a pharmacist? All you have to do is to open up a pharmacy, start selling drugs, and that's it. Um, so I think with that uh, role of, or the dwindling role of pharmacies, and at the same time, the, uh, the need in the healthcare system and the problems in the healthcare system, I would say that both of them created a space for clinical pharmacy. And I would say it's one part of why clinical pharmacy was created. So how is clinical pharmacy different from regular pharmacy? Well, the shift goes now from drugs, from a person who is an expert in drugs in general, to a person who is uh, patient-centered and who tries to uh, exploit his knowledge in, in pharmacology, in drugs, in toxicology, uh, to the benefit of, of the patient. Uh, so basically, they are experts in therapeutic use of drugs. They, are, they provide evaluations, recommendations, not only to the patient, but also to the doctor, to the institutions. Uh, they serve in hospitals, clinics, so they're not the regular uh, pharmacy shop uh, people. At the same time, they might also um, uh, serve in drug information hotlines. So basically in some countries, what you can do is basically call a specific number and ask for a clinical pharmacist. And like if you have a hypertension or if you have uh, diabetes mellitus, you can ask about the drugs that you use or if there is a problem with the drugs that you use and they can provide you an answer to that. Uh, again, they provide information to organizations like the World Health Organization, the American Heart Association about, you know, problems with the drugs, um, you know, possible side effects, uh, drug-drug interactions with other drugs. 
Um, so basically, it involves several skills. I would say it's basically a cocktail of pharmacology, toxicology, therapeutics, uh, clinical pharmacokinetics, and pharmacoeconomics, pharmacogenomics. Um, I will just add a little bit of detail about the role of clinical pharmacists, just specific examples. So what about doses in children? Now, a lot of doctors, uh, they deal with children as one entity. So is it, is it a child or is it an adult? If it's a child, give him that dose. If it's an adult, give him that dose. Is that true? Is that correct? So we know that a child goes anyway from three kilograms in weight till 20 kilograms in weight, like six times difference. And we, most of us, we deal with kids as one entity, just, you know, have a spoon three times a day, and that's it. And, you know, it, it, sh it shouldn't be the case. So who is responsible for calculating the doses for, for such, uh, for our kids, basically? And what about renal failure? Again, a lot of doctors, they deal with renal failure as a yes or no question. Does he have renal failure? Yes, give him that dose. If he doesn't, give him that dose. But again, renal failure is a continuum. So it's basically, it could be 10%, 20% failure, 50%, 90%. So who is responsible for calcul calculating the right dose for the right person? And what about pregnancy? Again, we have a lot of, you know, half of the community are, are women and they go through pregnancy. And if, if, if a woman has a problem with pregnancy, most of the doctors would just prescribe the safest drug. If it's a pain, it's paracetamol. If it is a, an antibiotic, it's amoxicillin. And that's it. I mean, a lot of them do. And, but what about the efficacy? So what if the pain is really, really, uh, like, severe? Is paracetamol going to work? Uh, so what if this bacteria is um, resistant to penicillins? What would you do? What other choices do you have? What stronger drugs uh, can be prescribed? Um, uh, I think we'll ha we have a problem with that also uh, with some doctors. So I guess a an expert in drugs would be very, very needed and very beneficial to that patient, uh, to the doctor in prescribing the drug. And uh, what about people with comorbidities? They have hypertension, they have diabetes mellitus, they have something else. What is the proper drug to give in those uh, comorbidities. Uh, so basically it's um, uh, a rigorous discipline and uh, we all know that it, it, it needs higher criteria for admission. Uh, people in clinical pharmacy, they have extensive courses in therapeutics, in drugs, in pharmacology. They have residency programs to be qualified to be uh, an assistant to, to doctors. So um, still a lot of people, especially doctors, they, they just don't like the idea of um, you know, of the importance of clinical pharmacy and they say, you know, everything is under control and we take care of patients, don't worry about it. So I'll give you just some, uh, some pictures they might stick in your, in, your, in your mind just as a um, conclusion to this uh, talk. So basically this is a patient, this is a child. Uh, it was known, I mean the parents knew that their baby had allergy to penicillins, but again the doctor prescribed penicillin by mistake and this is what happened to that child. Uh, so what if the clinical pharmacist was available? Wouldn't he maybe helped in this and maybe he was inter like he might have intervened and said no or maybe he would have asked the, pa the parents or maybe the child um, about any allergies to penicillins. Uh, this is a pe peptic ulcer caused by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and uh, uh, you know uh, I mean, if you know the, the pain that is caused by peptic ulcer, it is very severe, like it is, it's, it kills you. So basically this could have been avoided by adding a clinical pharmacist to the, uh, to the crew. Uh, this is a child who, who got anaphylaxis, again by, the wrong, uh, by giving the wrong medication. Uh, this is the person who had a photosensitivity because of amiodarone, which is an antiarrhythmic drug. And uh, the other picture on the, on the right, it shows the severe extravation uh, and the necrosis in the skin that happened because of the leakage of amiodarone from the injection site. So all those problems occur, and these are just some examples. Uh, this is a person with goiter, uh, because again of, a, of the wrong uh, medication use. The one on the right is showing bleeding because of an overdosage uh, or overdosing of uh, um, uh, an anticoagulant drug. So basically, the summary and conclusions from my talk is there are a lot of gaps, a lot of problems that exist, and we, we need to, uh, to know the problem first before we uh, uh, go further. Uh, our countries, and uh, Yemen, spe uh, Yemen specifically, uh, is lagging behind the, 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 uh, you know, other countries in the West, 
and Arab countries are losing a lot of, a lot of money, a lot of lives because of those uh, problems. Uh, clinical pharmacy is not here to push away other jobs. It's not a competition between uh, medicine and clinical pharmacy. They, they can, you know, work together. They can, um, you know, uh, a doctor can just benefit from the assistance that an expert in drugs uh, can give. And it can make a big difference in, in patients' lives. Uh, we need to start from universities. The problem, at least in Yemen, is that we don't have a lot of uh, universities which teach clinical pharmacy. So we have either pharmacy or, or you know, dentistry or, or medicine, and that's it. So we need to, to, to make it available as a branch of study. Uh, educational sessions like this one, awareness programs are needed uh, because, again, a lot of people, they just not, they're, not, they're not convinced that a pharmacy can work in a, uh, you know, by bedside or uh, side by side with a doctor. Uh, perspectives of pharmacists is changing the entire world and we need to uh, keep up with that and uh, uh, do the same thing. So basically pharmacy in the past was a person working in a, in a shop I would say, uh, but now the future is a uh, clinical pharmacy would be more uh, related to the patient, more uh, patient-centered. Now, is that into regular pharmacists? That's what I'm trying to say? No, basically. I'm saying that it's the beginning of a new era, a new uh, period where pharmacists are needed inside the pharmacy. They're needed in pharmaceutical companies, but are, some of them are also needed inside the hospital, side by side with doctors. So with that, I end my talk and I'm open to any questions.